Hello. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Taxi Meta Podcast number seven. Today we don't have any special guests at the moment. We have two listed and no idea awesome. which Oh, let me let me get you another link. I'm sorry, I, I was closing some pages. That's that is my bad, guys. How's it going, everyone? I'm blocked out. <laughs> yeah, that's me talking. Give me one second. It's not working. Let me close all my pages and reopen. Do we not think again? Oh, it's already doing it. <laughs> I hope he hasn't just worked doing it. So- it, it, you know, for the for the tournament though, we we use OBS Ninja and it worked perfectly fine the whole tournament. Maybe because we're two people. Uh, yeah, because but 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 oh, it's probably because you know why it's messing up. I think it's because of crypto. It's because crypto has this camera box and he's not using OBS Ninja Link. I should turn off my camera box. Is that? Yeah, turn off your camera box and then and put on OBS Ninja. And I think it'll fix it. Sorry, guys, we're a little scuffed. <laughs> but this is uh, number seven of the podcast, guys. Number seven of the scuff <laughs> podcast. Welcome to the scuff podcast. It has been two oh, months yeah. now. That's actually crazy to think about it. Because we skipped, we skipped one week, right? So we skipped one week. So this would be this would actually be number eight. So this would be two months that we've been we've been streaming live together as a uh, as a guild or, or organization, I guess. Player vs. Meta has been was born oh. two months ago. Yeah, it's, it's a lot's happened. A lot has happened, yeah, for sure. We're still waiting for V2. <laughs> still waiting for V2. Uh, we're also waiting for land gameplay to come out as well. So, But hey, we're, we're probably going to wait a little bit longer. Uh, that stuff should be around the corner. I think land gameplay is probably the first thing we'll see before we see V2, though. I think it's letting me do it. You should be able to just make sure you make sure you uh, you you actually have the thing disabled, not just like hidden, right? Uh, I deleted it. Um, then it should then it should work. Yeah, Alex, we've had a podcast for seven weeks. Where have you been? Yep. Because the camera's already in use. I mean, but it's literally not, you know. I don't know. Oh. Now your microphone's all messed up too. Oh, is it a, is it for real? Let me fix it actually. Sounds good. Yo, Alex, thank you for gifting out the sub, by the way. We are <laughs> welcome to the most scuffed of the scuffed podcasts. That's okay. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> this is just a this is a podcast where we just come on and talk and hang out. Literally, we were playing Wonder Heroes before this, doing some uh grinding me and uh twisted we're on like what level 20 on the infinity yeah. war so pretty insane actually a pretty fun game guys you can play for free for the next two days and try it out if you like it and then if you like it you can start playing on the 26 it's yeah and then it's like actually you pay like a dollar gas fee on like binance yeah and then also if you need help picking up your champions or you're looking forward to becoming a scholar for one of ours or one of our uh, scholars for the game that is something that will be given out in the future uh, as well too the mic is fine no, my camera no so bueno. I don't know why. Let me just add twisted on I'll just turn my Yeah, yeah I just I just add twisted. Share your share your screen you and I'll, the, I'll, I'll you gave me the wrong one, uh twisted. You gave me that same one. I need the one that says view, I guess. Okay. I mean, I just... I'm waiting for the lucky number seven to jump in. That's the perfect time to jump in. Because oh, this is, like I said, <laughs> this is the most scuffed of, of the podcast. But also, hey, you know what? That's uh, Sometimes you got to be a little scuffed. Hey, it is what it is. It is what it is. Also, our tournaments are bi-weekly, guys. Oh, so if you want to... Now, now there was none of me? And now there's <laughs> two. <laughs> now, now we got two twists. Oh, yeah, two twists. Uh, <laughs> two twists. All right, oh, guys. Let's meet our guest, Twisted, <laughs> along with other Twisted. No, he's Twister. That's my twin brother. Oh, <laughs> there you go. 
I'll just turn my camera back on. I mean, it's just for easier. Yeah, just turn your camera back on. Whatever. If, if if the thing's messed up, it's messed up. We'll just we just we just do what we do, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that was the metaverse twisted. Whoa, it was a big me. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Crypto Glider. Welcome, Welcome to the Crypto Glider Show. <laughs> Meet Crypto Glider. <laughs> now it's Microbeats. There we go. All right. All right, I guess we'll start off with a... So what do y'all think of the... What, the, what is it called? Lunar Express, right? Is that what it's called? Yeah, the Lunar Express. Yeah, so what do y'all, I want to hear y'all, y'all's opinion on this Lunar Express there. I guess their attempt to kind of burn axes, right? So uh, we'll start off with like Blacked Out. Like, what do you, what do you, what's your opinion on that? Uh, personally, I think it's a good idea, right? It gets, it gets people going, it gets people burning axes. Uh, the items that you get from them are probably kind of scam ish in, in a way. Not saying that they're a scam, like you're, you're not getting your items, but I'm saying there's going to be so many of those items that they're probably not going to have that much value. But the one cool thing about them is the what you can get other than the items from the f- the thing, like the ticket, the raffle tickets are what's really cool, right? Having a chance of getting like five of the origin axes that you know aren't created yet, that's pretty cool. Um, also, like the other prizes are really really cool. So I think it's really, I actually think it's a good idea, and I love what Axie is doing to try and burn axes. Um, any way to try and get the community together and to burn axes is, is great. Um, I would like to see more burns, but so, so what I always find is it's more like a, a, fi- a hot fix than like a solution. This is kind of another hot fix, right? It, it helps a little bit. It stops people from burning or it, it burns like a bunch of junk axes currently. And it burns like maybe two to 300,000. We'll say, I'm not sure what they're currently at. I'm just kind of, you know, speculating. I'll, I'll look on that right now. But it gets people to burn a little bit of axes, and then from there, it doesn't really do much, right? Once it once people stop burning, so I think it help. It's a little bit helpful, but at the same time, you know, it, it, it's 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 another band aid fix, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, Trish, how about you? How, how do you feel about how do you feel about that? Before I answer that question, I just want to uh, say that Alex drafts dra- uh, gifted a sub to Enrico, which won our tournament on Sunday. I'm not sure if that was intentional or if it was just. <laughs> Completely random, but uh, I think it's yeah, completely you know, random. The tournament, so you know, now you have a sub, uh, you're part of the PVM family, so congrats. Um, to answer your question though, um, it's, it's a step in the right direction, like, it's a great step in the right direction. Like, burning axes is great, you know, there's so many shitty axes that it's good to like burn some to get, get something out of it. Um, I feel like the rewards that it gives you, like the five land items, is kind of like lackluster, like, why only five items? Like why mm-hmm. can't they yeah. take like a bunch of different ones? Like and like like Blackout said, since there's only five, everyone's gonna have like the same ones. It's kind of like there's just so many of them. They don't even look that nice in my opinion. And uh like they don't even do anything at the moment either, right? Like like why can't they just like put like something cool, like you burn mm-hmm. axes and you have to get something cool, like something that like makes me want to like burn my axes. Like yeah, I saw yeah. that up and I was just like, Okay, I'm not burning my axes for this. No, nah, yeah, like, I agree for like for me. Uh- I don't like the idea. I mean, I get what they're kind of kind of going for, right? But it's just like, why not use those axes as energy for a scholar, you know? Just give it to a scholar, give them 40 energy. Well, SOP is down, you know? You have all these axes to burn. There's some people who are burning like 100 plus axes. Why not just give them to scholars so they can have more energy, they can put more SOP and give them a little bit more money in their pockets instead of just burning it for something that's not that great, right? Like, makes zero sense to me. Like, I have no idea, you know? I don't like the idea of burn axes. All it really did was just kind of raise the floor by like what ten bucks, ten fifteen dollars. Raise the floor by ten, you know. About. Yeah. So it's just like I don't know. I don't. I don't like the idea. I mean, I get what they're trying to get get where they're going, but I don't know. You know, <laughs> I don't like. Yeah, it. I think it's. I think it's a step in the right direction. I think. I think it's a step in the right direction, but I. I do a thing I agree with Twisted. I feel like, you know, maybe maybe making like 30 to 40 land items that you could have got or, you know, even like stickers that you could use like an emote, uh, emote in game would have been cool, right? Like, you know, yeah. get like a hello emote that you could like spam in game whenever you're f- versus your opponent would be like, you know, something cool that they could have added. But uh, the land items with only having five of them versus like 20, you know, it's, it, it just it, it's it it doesn't add that much currently. It's now you're going to have like. 500 of those you know regular items that people always get over and over they're going to be worth nothing you know yeah 
So yeah, I'd just rather have them have like a bigger pool of items. Probably be more better, I guess. Like you were saying, maybe interesting, make things yeah. cooler, I guess. No way. Uh, okay, so we'll kind of move on from from that. And so I know we just had our tournament this past Friday. What would you would y'all see like as in like new tech, new lineups, kind of new axes going into that tournament? That's kind of stood out to y'all. What well, uh, twisted? Well, unfortunately for our tournament, the spectator mode wasn't working. Yeah. So I didn't have the personal chance to see as many axes as I would have loved to with the new patch. Um, we tried to stream it, and every time we'd get into a game after like turn five, it would just freeze and nothing would happen, and we would have to exit it and come back. So unfortunately, we we ended up making a decision to end the stream early. Um, but I did get to see the finals match, and that was pretty interesting. Like um, it was Enrico versus um, Fury, yeah. and Fury brought this crazy lineup with like a winghorn bird. And he had like some like reptile team, like a like basically like a poison reptile, but like uh, he was using it with the bird. And I have like a double backdoor team, and he was like he had like a like an interesting plant as well. It, it was kind of crazy, honestly, like how he made it so far in the tournament with like a lineup like that. It's like unconventional, but it's kind of cool to see something different that you you don't usually see. All right, yeah, I like that bird. Yeah, that bird was interesting. Uh, you know, winghorn actually being used on on the class that it's supposed to be used on. <laughs> You know, so that was cool. What about you, uh, Black Dad? Do you see anything interesting? Yeah, I guess I'll, I'm just going to fully, like, talk about Fury's team. And also, there will be a video probably out about this in the next, like, two to three days. We did do a recording for the Grand Finals, if anyone wants to watch that. So that will be out on uh, YouTube. So if you haven't checked our YouTube, definitely do. But the team that he ran, which was probably the most, like, crazy I I've seen, he ran a Winghorn. Um, it was Winghorn, um, Trifeather, the last one, and peacemaker for the mouth it was really good it, it played very well and whenever it did get its back door it was like pretty crazy and it like changed the whole pace of uh games then for his uh back line or for his plant that he was running he was running like the you know the standard not really standard but like the non-standard uh um immortal plant the one with the bone sail uh zigzag you know hot butt and leaf bug but instead of running hop up with his he was running yam which is ran more as like a poison guy for his front line and then for his backliner he was running a herbivore acro mech which was pretty cool like a twin tail furball but like a uh, herbivore so it just seemed like it was more like a budget style team but it was working really well for him and he was able to like you know make it to the finals and he played very very well as well yeah that was definitely a close one uh it was what the, the series ended up being four three, and it went all the way to game seven. So, and it was still yeah. neck and neck because I thought for sure I thought if Rico's was going to lose because it was two two one, and then that plant that he had just turned everything around. So yeah, that, and then that, that one was thing interesting. That, yeah, one one thing to add on top of that is when uh when when Fury uh, I thought I thought the game was over, but Fury just got kind of unlucky on not really drawing a back door or anything on on mm -hmm. game came six of the set like i really just thought like why did he go back to this setup uh but both of them went back to like one of their setups that they ran constantly and it was just crazy because fury i, I thought fury had it in the bag but um enrico was able to take it and kind of won the set out from there so it was really cool to see all right all right cool uh so what about for like axes right like let's just go by axes that you've kind of seen this week this past week that y'all feel are be coming into the meta or i guess not axes i guess like team comps and stuff like that that you feel are going to become that are coming strong into the meta that people should know about we'll start with the blacked out um team cops i think are strong in the meta currently probably I, I would say there's the double bug plant which is really strong in the current meta and then there's another two teams i want to mention and i'm pretty sure twist is going to mention them as well there is this uh pretty much double reflect guy he he runs a reflect uh bulwark and scaly spoon tiny dino and kataro and the thing is this comp has been around for a long time and it's and it's been played but it just never was played to the top and now that's hit the top of the leaderboards now there's people playing it and, and noticing it but it's never it's always been really really good um so we're probably gonna see that comp a lot more and then he runs it with like a rimp in the middle and like a plant in the front so it's like this like really it was really budget until like i said until just recently but it's like a really good comp and then there's there's one more comp as well, um, kind of like the Heelosaur in the back, which is Tiny Dino, uh, Rosebud, 
um, Green Thorn, and then like one other card you can play. You can mix and match because the other card doesn't really matter too much. All right. Yeah, yeah. Why are you twisted? So what I've noticed uh, in the meta at the moment, there's there's a couple of decks, and the ones that stick out the most to me is you have Double Aqua Plant. Um, it actually got kind of a buff because Caterpillar is like really, really good. So a lot of people are opting to not run Beach anymore or Cactus, and they're replacing it with Caterpillar just because of the, the raw stats. And, you know, the fear, it, it actually comes in handy more than you would think. Um, it's, and so since like the Double Aqua plant is really good, uh, a lot of people have been playing the Reflectiles, basically. The new Reptile with, you know, like the Double Reflect, the Kataro Mouth, and the um, Tiny Dino in the back because Tiny Dino actually got got a little bit of a buff, which kind of puts it over the top. And like, I don't think a, real, a lot of people realize that like that team does not lose to Aquas. Like you have Kataro and then you have like all these like high defense Reptile cards. So uh, it's very, very easy for like a Reptile to 2v1 an Aqua. And then since uh, those decks got popular, the, um, the double bug Pocky is very good at the moment, uh, even though it got kind of nerfed with like the discards being uh, having to... Um, chain them and then like the fish neck taking a little little nerf but it's just so good against the reptiles because reptiles just kind of want to get like a big hand and then like you know 2v1 yeah. you or just, like go to late game where like the bugs just have like the bonus damage versus the reptiles but then also you have to discard to like kind of mess up the reptiles as well so i kind of feel like it's like double bug pocky double aquas to counter that and then the reptile to counter to counter the, um, the aquas after so it's kind of like a rock yeah. scissors form yeah, yeah, because I know uh, a blackout just switched over to uh, Double Buck Pocky. How are you liking that? How are you liking the feel of that team? Or after the uh, after the change, blackout, do you notice a difference, or do you do notice it, or what, like what's going on? So I'd say the only difference that I notice about the team is having the chain part, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Being able to not play like a single like pincer or not be able to play a single parasite by itself is the only thing that's annoying about the team. Other than that, it feels pretty much the same. the The only thing that got nerfed was. Uh, anesthetic bait which took a 10 shield nerf but it was already like it for i'm from season 18 so season 18 it was already at the same same damage level so it didn't really feel like a big nerf at all and it, it feels like it's still just totally fine so i i actually really think the double bug comp is still really really strong in the current meta and i think it probably won't fall out of favor for unless they make some type of change yeah. you, know, you know another another mid-season change that like or another off-season change that like really hurts the bugs more but right now i think the bug comp is still probably gonna be, we're still probably gonna see a floating top 100 it's like it's like the double anemone of like uh season like 18 right yeah, and yeah. um it took a huge nerf now it's like one of this it will be like it's like because double anemone ruled over two seasons i feel like double bugs is going to do the same thing where it's gonna be super op in season um 19 and now super still still really good in season 20 so it's like yeah. one of those comps that you can still play so we have somebody from the chat saying nerf AAP. <laughs> how do you feel about that? Like the aqua aqua plants or like double aquas? How do you feel like, where they where they're at right now? So double aqua, if not countered, is an extremely strong composition. Like you have Nemo for energy gain. You just have like a really good plant with like cattail, caterpillar, um, basically like sandal and uh, what's the last one? Um, Gota. Yeah. Like that, yeah. that is like very very popular. And then uh, you just have like everything in that deck, right? You have energy gain, you have speed, you have damage, you have like even card draw with cattail. So like it's it's just like a very very strong comp. And if left unchecked, like it it just beats everything. Like honestly, the only thing that it doesn't beat is the reptiles and the plants. And that's why people that's why those decks are even in the format because aquas are are so freaking powerful. Yeah, I see. I yeah. See. No, I, I I totally agree with Twisted. Um, like it feels like aquas. If they've been they've been king for so long and i don't <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know how you make them not king right even in season 18 they were still king uh you make you make a change where oh we nerf shoal star we nerf aranda but like that doesn't really stop them because they run mixed damage anyway so it's like they need the mixed damage to be able to deal with half the, the half the teams that they fight against or they run like a, a what is it a buzz buzz or a spiky wing it's called where they like chop through the shield for double the, the amount of damage to like make up for the loss of the aqua cards so it's like it if they, if they have no shield it still does decent damage so i'd say yeah aquas are really really strong okay interesting uh well, how do y'all feel about like the do you think that they're going to change the cards again right before the season happens so you think we saw you know we saw like a preseason nerf and buff or you think we're going to see another change to that that you know what they've changed just to kind of 
before we go into the actual, you know, season what? Wait, wait, what are we in season twenty? Uh, yes, season twenty. So what do you yeah, think? It's 20. Yeah, um, there's there's definitely going to be changes still. Um, so what actually, from my knowledge, what their plan was is instead of going with like a change into the season twenty, they wanted to do the change during the off season first, so they can see if the changes like mess up the game. And if they don't, then maybe they would keep it the same. Or like if it did, then they would change some stuff again. Um, I do agree with uh, Hippie in the chat that uh, Koi is way way too strong. It's just it's just too yeah. good, right? Like you're about to win the game, you just double Koi. They can't do anything. Like it's fat. You're faster than birds, and you just win. Uh, I, I do agree that Koi should get nerfed. It's just too powerful. And I'm, I'm talking about like a nerf, like like destroy the card, you know? Because if they destroy the card or even like change the effect of it. Like Aquas wouldn't be able to do what Aquas do, which is like versus birds, just Koi speed up and then win the game. So, yeah. you know, and he's right about the, bo the body being uh, too strong. Like, what do Aquas have that, that are bad for them? High HP, high speed. Like, morale kind of sucks. Skill kind of sucks. Like, you don't even need, and they actually have really high skill. They have the second, the third highest skill. So it's like they, they're just too OP. Like, you shouldn't they be fast of all worlds. It, it, it is what it feels like with yeah. Aquas. You shouldn't be well, fast and half HP. Well, the way, like the way I kind of see it, I guess when you're saying we're even talking about like Koi, right? Koi, it, I think is it, more nerfed already than than um, Acro, right? Because it, in order to use Koi, in order for the effect to have, you has to be another Aqua card. Or like Acro, I mean, you could just combo with anything. So imagine if Koi was like the same thing as Acro, where you can just combo with anything. It'd be even more broken than it already is. So it kind of checks it has its own little check in there, right? So unless you're just gonna delete the card completely, then there's really nothing else you can do about it. Unless you just nerf the damage to the ground. But the I think it's the aqua body it. that's the problem. It, it's the aqua body. The aqua body has like no downsides, right? Where if we're talking about like other other classes, aquas don't have a downside. Yeah. Um, th think about it like this: like a beast has 300 health, but squishy versus pretty much half the meta, right? So mm -hmm. if, if the beast is squishy versus half the meta, it has a slow body and, and, and you know, it can't really do anything, they kind of fall out of favor because an aqua can speed himself up if you run an acro. And at the same time, he does, he does so much damage into you anyways that it feels like super bad if you're fighting, in, if you're an aqua or if you're a beast fighting into an aqua, like you just never win that matchup. Like it, it just never happens. So it just, yeah. and the, with the skill change, the skill change made it so mechs could have a chance but still even then mechs still are on the losing end if they if their opponent has a better draw or has a better hand so i just feel like aquas overall have too powerful of a body compared to everything else in the field where they have high hp and then they have high high skill um and they have high speed so they're, they're, they they hit all all worlds like perfectly mm -hmm. i got you um how would y'all go about trying to nerf like the body of an aqua? I think it's you know because we've been in here so long, right? Like the bodies probably haven't been touched since and the forever. beginning, and yeah, since the beginning probably. Like, yeah. do you think do you even consider changing bodies at all at, at this point? Because then, the, in order for them to change the aqua body, right? That means they would have to completely try to do something at least with with Don's because Don's has been completely worthless forever. So it's like. Mm -hmm. You know, how would y'all even go about that, right? Because I think right now, it, you know, it's at a perfect kind of, not say perfect, nothing's really perfect, but it's, it's you know, as always, there's a triangle, right? There's a whole triangle thing where it's like, yeah, echoes are strong, but that's why reptiles and plants kind of keep them in check. And then you got the, you know, the mechs and the beasts who kind of keep those guys in check, right? So it's just like an evolving kind of circle. So how do y'all feel like I don't I don't I'm trying to I guess what I'm trying to say is how do y'all feel like the, the the are you saying the aquas are starting to outplay the reptiles and plants to where they just dominate everything and they're just king? I think so because if you think about it like this, right? Even versus um um even versus plants and everything else, mm -hmm. or yeah, even versus plants and, and reptiles, they have mixed damage. They don't just run pure aquas anymore. You run your aqua with like a, you know, a sandal or a scarab or something that boosts your damage, boosts your defense. So you kind of hit like the best of every world. It just, they're just a little bit over, just a little bit too powerful in my opinion. All right. Well, you twisted, do you think that they're just completely king right now? Uh, they're definitely really, really strong. Uh, in terms of fixing them, 
like uh I, I don't even know i'm like thinking about it and i, I just <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, it's I, weird right it's uh, i think v2 is like the only fix really right yeah i no, i agree i think v2 is probably the, is the only fix but oh, like so, design but, right yeah because yeah it's a different different game design which means maybe like maybe speed doesn't do what it does now like it yeah. does something completely different it could be completely something different yeah we have no idea right because i remember if you, if you remember those six cards that we saw up there there's some stuff that that spells and, and effects that we have never even seen like something called bubbles right yeah. like you want to imagine what that thing does you know like <laughs> yeah. there's all kinds of weird stuff on there so um yeah who knows right who, who knows what we got in store um as far as like breeding uh when it comes to breeding do you think these changes to the like you know getting these axi burns are going to get people to kind of initiate uh breeding again since the floor is kind of moving up a little bit do you think that's enough an intensive enough for people to breed blacked out uh i think with slp price being down the way it is i think slp and uh, or, or i should say slp and axs being down the way it is i think it's still profitable to breed because now the cost to breed is lower so it makes it there's more incentive to breed if you have an axi that's worth value so the everything kind of balances off of if slp and axs are down right so both those are down and the and the price of the axi that you're trying to breed is profitable mm -hmm. then you'll see people breeding but there's there's no profit in the breed then you won't see people breeding and it's also become more tight to breed now than it ever has been before which means what i'm trying to say is like it's very hard to breed unless you know exactly what you're doing and yeah. you're breeding for, for like certain axes like let's say th these new rept the reflect reflectals or whatever ref i don't know how you call them reflect reflect reptiles right those guys right reflectals and, and i think you had it guys. right you hit it right on there <laughs> reflectals <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the reflectals, right? <laughs> You're breeding the reflectals, then you, th those guys are like, uh, you know, can can be good if you you know. If you're breeding them, right? Yeah. yeah. So I think it, like it depends on what you're breeding uh, for it to be profitable. And they also made it harder to breed, though, which is another thing. Like they actually made it a lot harder to breed than it was before awesome. because they made it. Uh, well, you should never lose like that. Like if like let's say if you're breeding hundred percent together, you wouldn't lose the hundred percent, right? Now it's like actually harder to breed because you you get so many of these morphs like morph mutations. genetic. You're about the yeah, the mutations. mutations. Yeah. yeah, the mutations really hurt. So it makes it it makes it even riskier to breed now because like the chances you just get mutation in, in your gene pool is like it's super high, right? Yeah. Okay. So it's hard to like it's it's hard to get pure pure genetics. What about you, Tristan? Do you have any uh, opinion on on this? Yeah, like I'm I'm like like what I think what Axie is doing basically is that they're working on LAN gameplay and they're working on V2. 100%. So that's like taking away all like their resources, I guess, to do anything else, which is fine, you know? I think everyone here is like would you agree on that if V2 comes out and it's freaking, you know, insane and ridiculously fun and like they fix all the problems that the original game had, I think everyone I, I think everything would would be fine, you know? It's yeah. just that the moment, you know, we're kind of in the dark. We you know that we just see like the tweets, oh, just trust Axie, where we're working as hard as I can, support the community, you know, blah, 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 blah. And, you know, we've been hearing that for like months yeah. right now, you know, which is fine. Like I said, like I know to create a brand new game, like, you know, like for example, like GTA or Zelda or any of these like AAA games, you know, like as soon as like a game comes out, they're literally working on the next game before the game even comes out. And these games usually take like seven years to come out, right? So to make like a really well balanced game, it does take a, a like a, a shitload of time. And I guess like they don't want to like tell people like, oh, like it's taking a long time because obviously like, if you tell someone, okay, V two is coming out in one year, it's gonna be like everyone's gonna be like, well, I'm, yeah. I, I ain't waiting one year, you know? Yeah. So that's nah, yeah, I agree. From the point of view, so, but like for the players at the moment and the people that do support the game, it it, it does suck for us. It definitely does suck for us. Uh, you know the people that are still here like we are waiting patiently so like i said i don't like like i still like the game i still have fun playing the game you know it's not perfect but uh, i do see the potential i do see the vision so i really do hope when v2 comes out it's like it's amazing and uh i'm willing to wait till then yeah and no, i agree with you you know it's funny that you say that right like about like you know you're taking a year and stuff like that but you people gotta remember like in crypto right it moves fast like a crypto year is, is super quick. It, a lot of things have happened in one year. And the people who are in crypto are probably the most impatient people I've ever experienced in my entire life. 
<laughs> these people in crypto are so impatient you know and, and the funny thing is like right when you see all these nft projects and all these gaming projects they're giving you like insights behind the scenes of what they actually do right to create these games where in like if you were to go to like a triple a game they don't give you those insights it's like oh yeah your that game will be rally in two years right but you don't get any insight you don't get any 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 you know concept arts any of this like you know hey check out this video that we made for the game all, all this kind of stuff right doesn't get released to the public or here in crypto it does because it matters right like a hey, bit we need, these people need to build the hype in order for people to kind of stay around that project same thing kind of yep. with axie infinity and pretty much any other nft game that's kind of out there in the space right now so i don't know that's what i kind of how to i see my yeah, two I cents to, i don't i don't tell that crypto um like it's not like a regular game right like a game comes mm -hmm. out you pay 50 bucks you have yeah. your game yeah. you're happy but with this it's like we're buying assets that are literally worth like up to thousands of dollars yep hoping that like they go up in price because it's like it's really weird because it's like you're investing like stocks but at the same time you're like playing a game right yeah so like, in, a, in a different game if something doesn't work they just do a hot fix boom it's changed you know okay this gun does too much damage in call of duty okay boom it's changed no one cares but in crypto it's like you own the assets right mm -hmm. so since i own the assets my if you nerf my gun because it's too powerful my gun's gonna go super down in price just like axes so it's like to make the game better you have to like screw over a lot of people and yeah. that's kind of like, <laughs> like a lot as an axie infinity because like if something's too strong and you nerf it well all the people that invested in it lose all their money and they yeah. know that but at the same time you want to make a good game right yeah so like these crypto games, these play to earn games, like since they're like brand new and we don't have the solutions yet, like Axie Infinity has like a like 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 it's it's really hard for them, honestly. No, no, I agree. It is. It's hard for them. And, and it sucks for the person, who, you know, and it sucks for the people who who have to make those decisions of like, hey, yo, this spell's getting nerfed. This spell's getting buffed. This thing's getting nerfed. Right. Because it's like once people find out who that person was it's like they're the evil person right like oh they're the villains you know i invested all this money in there and you nerfed my card you know and like you're the villain yeah i, I totally agree with you so it's like it's really hard because like let's say for scholars for example like you want to make the scholars the best teams possible so you like build like the cheapest slash best teams and those teams usually get nerfed because since yeah. they're the cheap slash best most of the scholars have them right so like anemones termies you know going back in the past right mm -hmm. and those are people that are complaining because there's like millions like well like hundreds of thousands of players in that rank compared to like the top 100 top a thousand there's only a thousand so the yeah. top meta deck there's only a couple hundred people complaining but in the like 1500 mmr there's literally thousands and thousands and thousands of people complaining so th those are the pressure you have so like as like a manager for a scholar I, it's like almost like worth it to like give them like a decent team and not like a really good team yeah because the team is going to hold its value like i invested so much into double aqua plan i invested so much into double and enemies and like my value of all those axes have gone down like i think like like i started like my scholarship program in september mm -hmm. and i'm probably like break even you know like i'm not making money that's for sure i got you i got you yeah yeah so yeah definitely hopefully we're we know we hope that you know v2 comes along and then our axes that we feel like are worthless you know have a use right have, have that be land gameplay or have that be, um, you know, just arena mode and PvP kind of stuff. Um, hopefully, you know, everybody who's kind of patiently waiting, uh, hopefully you're all rewarded. Hopefully we're rewarded as well. We're going to continue to keep pushing, you know, forward. and keep continuing to move along this journey of, uh, of Axie Infinity and uh, NFT gaming. Um, what do y'all... I saw somebody ask a question here. Oh, hold on, let me, let me see if I can find it. All right, so, sure. okay, here it is. The burning mechanism. So how do I feel about that builders program, right? Like I know we together, or at least we're trying to, as a guild, try to create something for this builders program. Uh, we might not be accepted into getting a grant, but I still kind of moving forward. We want to kind of create something as a guild. But how do y'all, how are y'all kind of excited about that builders program for, you know, these, all these other people who are probably going to create these burning mechanisms, you know, for Axie Infinity. How do y'all feel about that? Uh, I twisted, we'll go twisted. Yeah, so I, I think it's a great idea. Like, if you look on Twitter, every mm -hmm. time Geo like tweets, there's always like there's always a couple of people saying, "How can you tweet and you're not fixing the game?" Or like, mm -hmm. "Yo, you shouldn't be wasting your time tweeting. You should be fixing fixing the economy." So like, it feels like all these like people like they know exactly what to do. Like they're like, "Oh, <laughs> like if you did this and this, the game would be good." So I, I really do feel like it's like kind of like a 
like a fuck you, you know, like, okay, like you think you can fix the game. Okay. Here's the builder program. We'll, 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 we'll sponsor you if you come up with a good idea, but fix it, you know? So I actually yeah. do like, cause if the community thinks they can fix the game, then I think it's great that, that they're saying, okay, here, here, you are community fix the game, you know? Yeah. So I love it. I actually love it. All right. What about you? Uh, Black Dot? How do you feel about the builders program? I think it's a great idea. I think it's another way for people to kind of make a burn. Uh, we're trying to figure out burns already. They started with the illusion, uh, the express, trying to get people to burn axes. Mm -hmm. I think any type of way or any type of thing, this is also going to go into their SDK. I think the reason why they're doing this now is to get people set up for when the SDK comes in like a month or a year or not a month, but like, you know, in, in probably six months to a year when that comes out, I think this is like the way for them. This is the express way for people to, to build out games already ahead of time for them to be like okay here you go here's a you know burn for the game you know for your for your land as yeah, well so i think that's kind of like a, a is what the goal here is but yeah i yeah. think any way to help burn X, uh, slp or to make any type of sync is always good so yeah all right yeah, yeah. and i agree too I, I absolutely agree um like we like I, ha I have a lot of plans for us especially like when it comes to sdks and nfts and stuff like that for like just purely just axie stuff and I'm excited to work with like the guild and kind of give them kind of opportunities to build upon that. You know, hopefully everybody else is kind of doing the same. But um, if y'all stick around, you know, I'm gonna see some exciting stuff in the future with uh, Play versus Meta. And I'm just I'm kind of excited, uh, you know, just talking about it. So <laughs> uh, we we'll kind of open it up to uh, I guess to the kind of floor. Um, we, this is probably not gonna be that long of a podcast. It's kind of just you know hanging out a little bit. Um, but we kind of open up to the floor, see if y'all have anything, uh, anything to talk about or anything to say. Uh, even y'all to chat, if you have anything to ask or anything to say, just go ahead and ask in the, in the chat room, kind of answer anything you'll have. Q&A or something. Yeah, that's some kind of Q&A or just ask some random questions, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I just want to add in that, uh, you know, like um, with crypto so crashing, crypto crashing and all this stuff, yeah. you know, I I'm, I'm in it for the long run you know i'm not gonna quit the game because something happens like i i do trust the project that actually got this far not because they're lucky they they came out with a great product it's actually a great community i've met some of the best people i've ever met online usually other uh, other games are very very toxic and if you look at the complaints most of the people complaining are like i, I don't hate to say it but they're scholars you know okay sop went down uh, make SLP go up. It's like, how about the managers that pay for these axes that are losing all the yeah, money? Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Like, yeah, maybe you're not making as much as you used to, but you're also not losing a penny. You know, like, like we've all, like, personally, us yeah. three, and I'm sure other people in the chat, like, we've lost so much money recently, you know, and we're just like, you know, this is how crypto markets work. It's got to go through the bear market, you know, like, like, fight gotta be a long, you gotta be a long term thinker, you know, like I said, that's why I said the crypto market is, 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 is full of impatient people, right? Like, you have to be patient, like, you know, the people want to be, oh, I want to be rich overnight, like, come on, you know, be realistic, right? I came from a traditional market where it's like, took me years to get where the money that I get, you know, in, in a traditional market, where it's like, you, you know, you wait here with a scholarship for one year, you're going to get like three, four times what you originally invested in. All you have to do is wait one year, like, you know, like just chill out, right? Like, uh, that's why I see it. It's like, people are so impatient that uh, they don't understand, you know, uh, there's some questions in the chat. Abino says, uh, when do you think the next land sale would be and how will it affect land prices? Blacked out. When do you uh, think? So at first they were saying, oh, we're going to sell it for the same price as they were selling it originally. But I think they realize now that that's definitely not going to happen. Uh, most likely yeah. they're going to sell it for around the same prices that land is currently. Um, I think that's probably what it's going to be. Because and all, also the way that they do it, no matter how no matter how they introduce the land, I think yeah, no one's going to be happy. No, no one's going to be happy. happy. I agree. What about you, Tuzzi? You think anybody's going to be happy? But the land, if I mean, people like get it, are definitely land. Be happy, but like no well, one's gonna be happy because well, well, first like, off, it also it, right? remember you gotta remember right when the mystic land and in, in, it, was, it was like a mystic chest and you had a chance yeah, to get and, yeah, and it too. was I, mean, I think I, it was I, they came out as as one ETH if I'm if I'm correct to buy the mystic chest it was it one was, ETH it was lower than that I think was it lower maybe it was it, it was, was lower, like yeah. maybe it was like point eight then. It was like point yeah, eight or something. But anyway, it's just like so. Do they go and honor that? You know. It's, it's like yeah. so people go and buy these point eight things and it automatically means the land is going to be worth 
you know, several million dollars for 0.8 is just like it makes zero sense. But at the same time, it's like, oh, we can't do that, right? Let's sell the, the Genesis You're land right. for, for $1 million. Who's the one buying it for $1 million? The people who already have Genesis land, right? Yeah, it's Nobody's, not going to be new people. It's gonna, people are going to be pissed off no matter what. Like, I, it's just... Yeah, because this is this what it says. One plot of land in the savanna. So this this is what a savanna crate gets you. One plot of land in the savanna area. Mm -hmm. Two rare items and eight common items. Extremely low chance to get a Genesis plot. Then we go to like a land for a forest plot. You yeah. get one plot of land, ten rare items guaranteed. <laughs> so it's like, you know, the higher you go, the better you get. With a mystic yeah. crate, you get one land plot or one land plot in the mystic area. Uh, mystic, uh, one mystic, three rare. Or higher uh, items in six common items. Chance yeah. at a Genesis land. It doesn't even say low chance. It's just chance at Genesis land. And then an Arctic crate says one plot of Arctic land, two epic items, three rare items, and five common items. So you're guaranteed to get two rare items, three epic items, and whatever. Let, let's just like look. I'm gonna go look up the price of like a cheap, um, uh, the cheapest rare item. Cheapest rare item right now is 0 0.035. So it's pretty pretty not that expensive. That's currently mm -hmm. seventy eight dollars, right? But let's go to let's go to an epic item now. An epic item is currently no, 0.2, no. so so five hundred dollars is currently. So if I would have bought if I would have bought a force chest and I get ten rare items or ten rare items, I would have made the price from just the the, the you know the items. The and items then, yeah. Like yeah, one mystic one mystic item from one of these mystic crates mm -hmm. is worth 0.2.4 f. So or two point four f. So I would have got I would have got double my price if I would have bought one mystic chest. So it just like they can't. They definitely can't make them floor price. They're going to have to probably make them expensive. But then, like we just said, nobody if you make them expensive, buy them. Like, nobody's gonna the only have people that can buy them are the guy that, that can spend 15 Ethereum to buy a mix of Lotto Land. I would buy some for sure. I'm, I'm fucking scooping them up. But at the same time, it's like if, if they were to launch them at a normal sell price, right? That just means all the land of everybody selling is going to completely drop. Genesis Land is going to drop. Uh, everything right is going to drop why because people are just going to try to offload it you know what i mean and make that flip right they don't really care about the land they just want to flip it and that's pretty much all they want to oh, do for right? sure, to for sure. people are going to buy yeah they're so going to buy the, the crates the, for cheap and, and so like the, the 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 land the value of land is going to drop so they have to they run into that issue too yeah it's just like i don't know they should have just did uh, it all, they, they should have just did the land all at one time you know like no i totally agree uh here's another question from the chat you're building teams on season 20. What do you think will be meta teams uh, soon? So what do you think will be the meta teams for season 20? Mm -hmm. uh, Twist Engines, you're tied up with all the meta stuff. What you got for us? It really depends on the buffs and nerfs, right? So the way that the meta team works is that depending on what gets buffed or nerfed, that is like literally what makes the meta, right? So if like one card gets really strong and then that makes like a deck really good, then that deck starts being played which starts the meta. So since that deck's really, really good, well now you either have two choices. You play that or you counter it. So then you yeah. start playing deck that counters it, right? So then whatever deck counters that deck becomes in the meta as well. And then once again, a deck counters that deck, that, get, that deck gets into the meta as well. Yeah. So basically mm. what I'm trying to say is to answer your question, we won't know until we see the nerf or ban list. For sure. True. And I, it, and I, it I, usually I, comes towards the end of the season too, right? Like like two weeks yep. or a week before the season ends, before we see like the actual meta meta. We always see it as just like pre-meta stuff. Yeah. Uh, here's a great question by Alex. I've seen many scholarship programs and players selling axes to buy into other games such as Peg Axie. Should we be worried about the future of the game? Um, think we are losing player base. Think, uh, do you think we are? So, losing so I guess he's what he's trying to say is, uh, I, we're we're probably losing player play, or we are losing player player. Probably base. right because you know why I I can tell you why this and this is a situation I think uh, was it twisted I think twisted hit on right. It's like the scholars who just leave right, they got no money invested in the game. Who, you know they don't care if they can get hired one day and then leave in two weeks. It doesn't affect them. Who it affects is the managers a hundred percent. The scholar can, you know, leave and get out, and the managers can be like, sure, they can sell their axes, right? Completely sell all their axes and go into another game. But it's like, to us, it's like we're losing money no matter what we do. Because our as soon as you buy an axie, I feel it depreciates in value almost it instantly, does, yeah. right? Almost instantly. Unless it like yeah. gets buffed somehow, you know, we got lucky, we hit something. But it's like... Yeah, and then, and you sell it. You, then so, you have to sell it to, yeah. to make the money from the buff. So. It just, I think it all depends on, who, like, it all depends on, you know, who's your manager. It all depends on, you know, what kind of program your manager is creating for you. And it all depends on what your manager offers you, right? Like, 
Like, not every manager is the same. Not every guild is the same. Everybody is completely different. And, you know, to be honest, I think it should be the scholars who interview the manager to say, hey, what do you offer me, right? Because in reality, it's the it's the manager that needs a scholar, and that the scholar doesn't need the manager, right? Like, that's the way I see it. Where it's like, you know, with player versus meta, you know, we offer all our guys coaching. All the, they, they get, you know, uh, we teach them, you know, all kinds of things, right? From classes, from like, you know, leadership to investing to, you know, just life skills in general, right? Where I'm sure other guilds probably don't even do that. You know, we hang out with them all the time. We, we chill with them. We, we live stream with them. So it's like, you know, you got to build that community. And I feel like, you know, some managers just want to make the money. You know, they're making the money. They just roll out and go somewhere else for the next, you know, quick buck. Yeah. So. Yeah, I yeah. would have to. Uh, um, to answer his question, though, do I think we should be worried? I'm like, no, of course no. not. Yeah. Like, actually, if you want to do 20 energy, it takes about like an hour and a half to two hours to do that. So you like gamers are gonna game, right? So like mm -hmm. I feel like there's room in the space for multiple games. You know, like you play a little bit of Axie, play a little bit of Wonder Heroes. You know, play a little bit of Legend of Naria, play, play a little bit of Pay Axie. You know, and that's only like eight hours of your day, right? So if you're like gaming, like for me, for example, like my my whole life right now is an empty game. So like I have like so many hours in the day to do so many different kinds of games. And if I'm earning from um, like basically money from each of these games, like I think that's awesome. And, you know, you can just like stay at home and play games and like make some money. You know, that's 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 yeah. freaking awesome. So I, I I really do hope that other NFT projects come out. Plus, also if there's only one NFT project like Axie, then they're just like at the top, they're a monopoly, and there's no competition, which means the 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 quality of the games is going to be shit, right? But if there's I competition. Agree forces other companies to always like come out with the next best thing, make the next best game, good patches, you know? It keeps people competitive and I, I, I think competition's good for the environment. No, I agree hundred percent. Competition is good a hundred percent, right? Because if they notice that all oh, my our numbers are dropping, they're all going over to let's just give an example. Like they're all going over to Wonder Heroes and they're gonna be like, what's Wonder Heroes doing that we're not doing, right? And they're like, oh, and they're do doing do it. Yeah. They have all these things, you know, all these kind of things going on for them. Hey, how can we implement this, some of these things that they're doing, right? Like, yeah, you see, yeah, that, that creates good competition where it just like benefits the player in general, right? And that's, how, and that's what we need. Like we need more solid, legitimate kind of NFT gaming uh, companies to come out and compete against each other for the player, right? Like, yeah. All right, I think that. Uh, go ahead, go ahead, black that. Oh, I was just gonna, I was just gonna uh, finish uh, answer to what Albino's saying. Uh, mm -hmm. He's talking about like bots and buying buying things up. Uh, he's talking about it for mainly for the land sale, but yeah. this is just for this is just for Axie in general. There, like, there's really no way to counteract bots right now. You post an item on the marketplace. Let's say you post it for way too cheap. A bot's gonna buy it before anyone else can ever even have a chance to attempt to swoop it up, right? So there's always bots out there that are gonna be doing that. It happens throughout the whole crypto market. It happens throughout you know, you know, the uh, what is it? The stock market as well. It happens through everything. There's no really way to stop bots unless you make a system where it's like only whitelisted people can buy land or X, Y, and Z. Um, and then, then you're making another list of people that are going to hate you for making it. You have to have X, Y, and Z to be able to buy the crate. So it's just, it, it's just, it never is a good, <laughs> it never is a good system. Is what I'm yeah. trying to say. No, no, no. I agree. It's it's very it's gonna be it's hard, right? Like especially trying to a bot like it's almost it's impossible <laughs> yeah I've, I've ran bots before like for buying like trading bots like you know in the market in the crypto market and you a regular human cannot compete can't even compete with that we have yep. one guy say sop is forecasted to uh pump in the time after land slash v2 but still eventually dips in scholar would just sell and sell can you see a stable community can you see a stable economy on axie after release of uh land or v2 um it just depends right like where we are i guess and how they how they change uh what like burn mechanisms with slp right because the thing is yeah you're right the, the scholar is going to sell right like that's just their their thing they're going to do they're going to sell you have to kind of get them to kind of incentive to either stake that sop to lock it up in some in some kind of way and get them a different kind of incentive for that sop in order for that yeah to become some kind of stable otherwise they're just going to completely sell 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 right and the managers are going to be kind of stuck with everything again well I, I, don't, I don't think it really matters if the scholars sell if they make a really fun way to like burn slp like the people that do have money are going to buy up the slp so you want to sell your slp and like 
like for example when i first started playing like breeding was like really big right like, mm -hmm. like huge. everyone wanted to get into the game everyone wanted to get axes so like people would literally buy slp off the market to breed and right? 20 cents too and, what, yeah. and it's an inf and when it's an infinite supply so yeah yeah so even if SLP, if scholars are selling slp well imagine if i buy slp and like it makes me do something that's really fun with it that like i, I want slp because like i want to use it I, like i want to burn it so I don't. I don't think it really matters if if scholars sell SLP as long as there's like a way yeah. for like the people who do have money to to want to buy it. Yeah, and and I think that's why those that builder program is here, right? Because like, let me give you an example of what the builder program is. So the build the builder program will be like, uh, say the scholar wants to make some extra money on top of their what you know what they got paid out. So they got paid out a thousand SLP, and they and they found it, and um, the builder program somebody created a game where it's like a board game that they're probably really good at. They can go in and put in like 500 SOP, and then if they end up winning that board game, they will get back like you know 2,500 SOP on top of that board game that they've won. Right, 10 percent of that the, or the total um, pot gets burned of SOP, and then whoever wins gets the rest of the pot. So that's kind of an idea, the idea of like the builders program, where it's like they're creating these incentives to burn, where it's like at the same time they're getting like you know your average person to kind of want to use that SLP up instead of, you know, cashing it out right right, right away. So that's, you know, initially, kind of the, what the burn is. Uh, let's see. We're going to close out here because we're kind of, cameras are messing up to starting to act up over here. Black Dot's looking like he's over there in Willy Wonka world. So, <laughs> and then you can you, you Black can Dot's over twisted. here, Twisted's over here looking like he's freaking... <laughs> It's this like no TV sack, no TV signal. So <laughs> we're gonna, we're gonna. I'm gonna spit out my water. <laughs> <laughs> so we we're gonna, we're gonna, yeah, we'll we'll figure something out. We're gonna throw a host over to our good friends, uh, Super Well, Sean, our boy Sean. We're gonna hit him up with the raid. I'll show hey, him Sean. some love. I'll show him some love. Uh, we'll see y'all next time, guys. Into the, the Axi uh, Axi Meta podcast. Remember, our tournaments are every two weeks. Um, the next one is, I think, on the fourth. Or the, let me check. Yep. Let me be sure. Right, the fourth. No, that's too soon. Is it the fourth? Yeah, it is the yeah, fourth. No, it is. Yeah, the next is one is on the fourth. So if you want to sign up, go to our website, axiometa.io. Go ahead and sign up. The link is there. Uh, we'll open it up probably next week. Um, I just want to if uh, you guys have any ideas that you want us to talk about in the podcast, please let us know on Twitter, our Discord, our streams, anything. We're always looking for ideas to you know help the community. Yeah, just throw it in our Discord. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll you know, just add one of us here in the Discord and, uh, you know, or message us. We're always down for ideas. So thank y'all so much, you. guys, for coming by. Uh, we'll see y'all. We're going to start the raid. We'll be there in about, I don't know, a few seconds. So any last words before we roll out, guys? Nope. Yeah, I just want to thank everyone for coming, and I do appreciate, uh, you know, taking the time to come listen to us ramble. Look at that. We got Bree Bean. Congrats, Bean, on that 30. Hit us. Hit me up on the uh, on the Discord. Congratulations. We got you a new scholarship. Well, I'll get you set up, all right? See y'all, everybody. Have a good day. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you, Alex.